everybody. We're here for a dynamite review. Remember those? Well, of course, we are live. Noticing that we have a Rampage show coming this week. And knowing that everybody is excited for that, we're under we're over three weeks away from All Out, CM Punk, and Daniel Bryan. That still people still think they're okay, you're gonna garner at least a quarter million. That's that's a good sum of viewership, but that's not what you should want to expect when you get like up like you want people to watch your show. But still a good sum. Like that's a decent sum of viewership. What happened on Dynamite? Let, let's just get through it. They start with a crappy six man tag. I think I saw. I think I skipped this match. All I saw was they won by the BTE trigger. It was a bunch of jobbers and one half a top flight. I think the other half got injured. Jurassic Express came later on after a basketball promo. Yeah, they're still doing the basketball crap, and people still think that the Young Bucks are good for some apparent reason. <sighs> they they end up getting dumped on by Luchasaurus and getting jumped by a short midget. Like the the. Uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega suck, bro. Like they just suck, man. Like I'm not, I'm not even trying to sugarcoat it all because I'm not a big fan of these guys as wrestlers. They just have no entertainment factor. They behave like mid mid card main eventers. What part of that screams that they are over? What part of that? Honestly, they're not entertaining. In a factoid that I'm supposed to like them. I mean, hate them. Kenny Omega tries to do comebacks that he thinks are going to get him over. First of all, he has to be over. He's not over. People think, oh, well, he's saying something that's not cool. So that means that it's a, that means it's garnering heat. Oh, that means it's getting no reaction. The worst thing, as a heel, you get no reaction, bro. If you're not getting any reaction as a heel, you're, you're just not good as a character. That, that's just that's just an easy said said than done, bro. And that's about it for most of the elite segments. The most that happened was the elite killer. That sucks. Kazarian came out, and the only person that he can competently beat is freaking Brandon Cutler. What part of that is badass? Just, just, just saying, just saying. I'm like, I wanna, I wanna be supportive, but it, it, it just show no reason for me to like these people. And just knowing, like, this was just a mediocre show. They had the better match, Darby Allen versus a guy that I've never seen before. I don't know what this faction is. It's the, it's called 2.0. Three jobbers with minuscule build. The only person with an average look is Danny Garcia. That's about it. Match had decent chain locks. Average headlocks. A decent back and forth for a guy that's consistently beaten main eventers. And yet he still has 50-50 matches where it looks like he's unrealistically winning. And just an average match. He wins off the coffin drop after a consistent generic Heal, uh, uh, distractions, Sting comes, does a comeback, takes out most of 2.0 with Darby Allen going wild. Average match, but it felt like nothing was going on. Bro, I, I'm, I'm just conflicted on what the hell are they doing? Like, do you guys care about making a big show? Next up, we had, of course, another trios match. Another six-man. We need more tag team matches for, like, the minuscule tag team division. The, like, serious, honestly, they, they put it in a fake pedestal of tag team wrestling. I've never seen fakeness like this in my life. Well, it had... Whoever Ty Wheeler Utah is, Orange Cassidy, and... Chucky, chunky, uh, it's Chunky Taylor because he always has a, he has, a, he always has a stomach poking out with the Private Party and Matt Hardy, and it's nearly the same match they've had for the last several months. 
counter after counter, like, oh, he had a brain buster. Oh, it's good. It, 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 the superplex. You thought a superplex was going to be the finish? A superplex they thought that was going to be finished. A brain buster they thought. A twisting neck breaker of all things. A twist of fate breaking out. There was a Superman punch. Gin and Juice got like, oh, you know how many freaking false finishes in a tag team match. Tag team match false finishes should always feel more dramatic. The very few times they happened in the match. They did it at least five times over a six man. Being the second six man where nobody gets the benefit out of this. So imagine how wasteful you're you're doing it, bro. So private private party and Matt Hardy loses. No, they've won. And then it issued over to over the outside. Orange Cassidy got jumped. And then uh, by uh, Jack Evans, so I think they're going to try to force over Jack Evans a feud. Where's Angelico? And second, uh, Nyla, Nyla Jax Rose, literally, just, there's going to be a sucks video on him. There's going to be a sucks video on him soon. Oh, why she's just Nia Jax on AEW. Then they had their match. And it was garbage. The funnest part was Vicky Guerrero screaming like a freaking banshee on Orange Cassidy. Like every move, like, oh, power bomb from the outside. Oh, Harkon Rana. Beast bomb. A knee drop dive that never gets the finish. Bro, these women just continue to, like, astound me how overhyped they are. Ah! Chris Datlander obviously won off a powerbomb, and then a 450 splash. Really below average match. Then we had Andrade being like, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Everybody knew I was the main eventer, even though I was a bottom feeder in, the, in AAA, and I was a bottom feeder in WWE. That means a big time on AEW, because I wrestled in Mexico. So that means I'm a star. Don't get me wrong, I talk, I have my opinions about Andrade, but every time I put over my sucks videos, you guys think that they suck overall. I bring up the negatives, primarily the negatives and positives, and why this person made, uh, made it into discussion. Andrade has positives about him, that he's pretty good in the ring. Really decent on Lucha Libre, has a decent look, but all he's gonna look like is a mid-card, where he can't carry a company unless it's incredibly small. And that sounds harsh, but it's uh, but it, you gotta look. You gotta look realistically. Don't be like saying that he just has a good match. That doesn't determine if a guy's a star. If you do, you're you're stupid. You're just too single-minded. It, it, all because he had a great match. It's that's a weird thought process, bro. I don't understand that thought process. And then, of course, Pac issued a match. After all the obsession and calling out Death Triangle, Pac wrestles uh, Andrade at All Out. So that's the thing that they're going to hype up there. Am I excited to see the match? I bet that the match is going to be fine. I don't know if this is going to be a complete draw, because I know that most of the WWE guys that they keep signing are overshadowing any of the core talent. They even had the issue over at Dark that Joey Janela turned on... His partner, Sonny Kiss. My ass, I'm not watching Dark. Just just knowing that people have to care that these people still were originally signed to begin with. And, ugh. Just, just awful. Then, we had a promo involving Kenny Omega. And, of course, the number one contenders. So, Jurassic Express, like, they literally came out for no reason. They weren't even interrupting much of a promo. Other than insulting, like, well, well you are the number one contender, Christian. You're about to get your shot. But you're also going to get another world title shot out all out. So, I feel like you're going to drop the belt the impact title to, to him at all out. And 
make him lose. A, uh, no, he's gonna drop the Impact title at a uh, rampage and let him keep the world title at Impact uh, in All Out. If they make him retain twice, that's an ultimate jobber move, especially how bi monthly your pay per views are. Is your best thing to make your guy get an automatic championship match when he already got something booked? So this match already feels like it's going to end in DQ or one title change. Hopefully it's a title change. See why I don't do universe mode with the women? No disrespect. There's no... There, there's certain talented women. Hell, Thunder Rosa just got signed. But, oh my god. You can see why so many people have some negatives about it. So, Britt Baker had a decent baby face. Of course, she's from Pittsburgh. Promo. Going over bleed and yellow and gold. Going over red velvet. They had their little vignette. That red velvet just oozes no charisma. Don't know why an up-and-comer gets a shot at a main event of a new show when nobody knows who the up-and-comer is. How's that a good way to sell over your show? Second, just knowing that this is going to flop, they make a main event. Red Velvet's already an undersized black woman that has average wrestling skill and no, no talking ability. And they just have her jump. They just have her jump... Uh, Brit at the end to just make it feel like, oh, but these women are going to kill each other. And then we had the Impact titles, bro. Evil Uno looks like a look like a dark bag of chips. And literally, Stu Grayson looks like the Blade from the Butcher and Blade tag team. He looks like that. Guy sucks. They always do indie moves. They never have an identity. If Evil Uno can't talk, and there's no registered leader. They came from being a top heel faction to just being a comedic relief with BTE segments getting them over. They suck. And here they are for Impact belts. They're not even the real belts, even though how much screen time they got on TV. Because they know that they're glorified jobbers. They don't like them. I don't like them. Ugh. So... Ugh. Just some more average wrestling. Big boot, big boot. Thigh slap, thigh slap, 450 into a cannonball senton. It ends with reversals over the magic killer until they get the magic killer. And it's like, oh, well, a lot of stuff. You don't even see a part of the Dark Order. And it's like, they still want you to dramatically care. Why are they trying to make it feel like, oh, friendship's the best thing with a team called the, Mag the Dark Order? The best thing was to happen was the Dark Order betraying Hangman Adam Page. Well, why? I'm being honest. How is this helping in any way, shape, or form? It, it kept with the false finish over a false finish. Fake kick after fake kick. And they think, like, they had the Japanese flag there. Like, people actually care that a faction was from a different country. Seriously, I remember somebody was doing... A video over on Destructor and why I think of a Blake Club sucks or New Japan sucks. Decent video. Pretty good video, right? And then he came... Then somebody, of course, had an opinion on it. So he did, like, a Sins video on it. And it was so dumb. It was like, did you know the NWO was in Japan first? Okay. Was it mainstream in Japan? There's plenty of stuff that's inspired by anime in the United States. Guess what made it popular? Either stuff from from Europe or something from the United States. And it's and you can get inspired by something from different places. Certain art styles, certain films, certain art you you can do something that's inspired by another form of work. Same thing like pro wrestling. We have rip-offs of nearly everything to this day. Bullet Club is just rip-off of what the NWO in the United States were. And DX. They're n they are never getting over the United States. Because most of their members are uncool weirdos that make dick jokes. Not funny ones, too, because they're always thinking about sucking each other off.
I'm not even trying to insult them. You can literally see the clips on BTE. These guys are not masculine. These guys are not cool. And they never get over outside of their own fan base. So how in the hell are you expecting the Bullet Club, as many as you bring up Haku's son, you bring up these two adolescent weirdos, and they don't get over. Then they had Paul White in the rescue of Tony Schiavone after QT asked for an apology. He, he called him a son of a bitch. And then it ended in a fist fight. I know I'm kidding. He RKO'd Tony Giovanni's son. Like, okay, well, first of all, I didn't even know where the apology came from. I don't care about this. Why is the factory still getting screen time even though they got overall shovel? And just knowing <laughs> to, to continue with the lack of, like, interesting factions, even though they have, like, lack thereof of creativity about it. Big Show comes out and choke slams up uh, some jobber in the faction. So it looks like they're going to edge over to a program with the dark commentator coming out of retirement to defend Tony Giovanni. Then we had Jess, uh, Chris Herico face off against Wardlow. He won. But here's the thing. With a major handicap already facing a guy bigger than him, why didn't he just put that Oh, you can't use the Judas effect. Or you can't... Or you can't win w with the lion... Or with the lion tamer. Or or something below the waist. So he can't take out the big guy's legs and he can't use his finishing move. Th this is already built for Jericho to succeed. And it makes the young upstart big heel. Everybody's praising like he's a rookie goof. How's that going to get MJF good around the top scene? Because we already know that Jericho's going to succeed anyway. And they had it over the, on the intro, too. They had, uh, like, Je like, oh, I'm totally going to beat him. And they act just like he did Cody in the cage, right? Dumbass. Idiot. You're, you're already making sure your faction feels like they're just not equipped to do anything successful that makes the entire... Uh, Pinnacle just looked like a bunch of jokes. There was a code breaker that the commentary thought it was it was gonna be the finish, and it was like Jim Ross's of uh, high uh, old ass that thought it that thought it was a stunner, even though it was a cutter. Okay, that was just a small nitpick. I have nothing against Jim Ross, but he he's been notable for making any mistakes, and mistakes happen. I get it. Judas effect that got reversed, and F10. Even though MJF wanted him to suffer. So he really failed there because he didn't get the job done. Jericho hits the Lion Tamer. And he wins. So no Judas theme song and no Judas effect. Jericho's going to win anyway. I don't care. Everything about this show felt so choreographed. So predetermined and just, oh, but they say shit. And it's like, okay, that's cool. There's TV shows that say shit. What's so special? Honestly, how... Like, I'm, I'm not always trying to be a dick guy. It's like... Honestly, what's so special about this type of show? None of the stars are basically getting over. They try too hard to be edgy. And, and, and it's... And just they go with these obvious setups that are just not making... The person look organically cool because you already know what's gonna happen. Jericho's possibly gonna win. Jurassic Express is possibly gonna lose, and Omega's gonna beat. Uh, Omega's gonna beat Cage. And the best thing you guys going, you guys AEW got going is two forty year old guys that even at the peak of their career wasn't even drawing in their most popular. Parts of their career. Yes, movement. Rob is getting below 5 million viewers. Literally. Summer of Punk. Lowest ratings over the, after the, after the road to WrestleMania. Things that, pe the, the, literally the push that got certain wrestling fans to come back. Most people weren't even thinking about watching it anymore. 
these guys are not quintessential draws. These guys are going to get you like a over 200,000. That's the most they can do. That's not it factor. You got Goldberg, Brock Lesnar on your show. That's going to get you a mil quickly. But they're not thinking about that. They even banned Hulk Hogan. Vince Russo. Tony Khan's a mark idiot. But that's all I gotta say, bro. Like, this is why it's a waste of time always reviewing AEW. Because they know that they have the pieces to succeed. But they just want to restrict themselves into this bubble to think that this is a universe mode. You don't book shit like it's a universe mode. That's restricted upon yourself because that's only what you enjoy. Oh, Jesus. This show is mediocre. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoy the rest of your week.